Okay, thank you. Yes, I am now recording. So, as we said, 515A, indirect method cash flow statement. So, we start off again with net income. We add back our depreciation expense. So, I want to just briefly go over in the investing activities, the sale of the investments. So, why, first of all, is it in the investing section? Yes. Because it's long term. It's a non-current asset. And that's what I said. Non-current assets would be classified in the investing section. If it was considered a current asset, then it could be in the it would be in the operating section. Um, you you would I mean you would know the I, the general assumption with investments is that they're going to be non-current. They're usually non-current unless you're told otherwise. If it says trading, then you're really thinking current. Okay. Um, so, with the sale of an investment, tell me what was one thing you would definitely debit when you sell an investment. You sell an investment, you would definitely debit cash. Tell me something you would definitely credit. You would definitely credit the investment. What else could be part of this equation? It could be. I'm thinking, oh, wait, could be accounts receivable if they didn't actually pay you, but in general, when you sell investments, you're going to get that money back from the brokerage firm, whatever it is that you are working through. I'm thinking loss or gain is really what I'm thinking to balance out this entry. So if you sell an investment, you have to take the entire investment off your books. So in this case, they took the entire investment off their books for at how much? At 22000 Okay, because it's the, they're taking the 74, you see you, you had 74 in the beginning, you have 52 at the end. So the entire investment comes off your books at 22, but you have a loss. So do you debit or credit when you have a loss? You debit a loss, and how much is the loss for? You debit the loss for 7,000. So that means how much cash must, must you have received? 15,000. So I just wanted to make sure I went over that specific. So here is the fifteen thousand in this for the sale of your investment, no, not twenty-two. Okay. So you'll notice I've mentioned a few different times. I keep doing journal entries to try to show you what's the cash impact. So this is one way of approaching when you have a question about how something should look. One approach is to make journal entries so that you can try to tell because this is the story of what happened. This story makes sense. This might not make quite as much sense when you're trying to figure it out. So if you make journal entries, you can try to usually make some sense of what happened and what the cash effect was. Okay? Any questions on this uh, indirect method cash flow statement? Yes? The sale of the investment here is always just the proceeds from the sale. Here, what happened here is they don't give you what the proceeds from the sale are in this problem, do they? They don't give it to you. So you have to figure out what the proceeds are, okay? Which is kind of like doing the equation that you are used to or that you learned, right? It's you're backing into the proceeds by looking at what the change in the investment account is. So you sold the investment. That was the basis of your asset and you take into consideration the loss, and I'm showing you how you make sense of it via journal entry. Get it? Okay. Other questions on the indirect method? Yes? Are we going to have access to um, I mean, the, the idea here, someone else asked me that question. So I can put these up for you, but the idea is, is that you're supposed to be practicing this and doing these. While I, that's why I give you time during class, is because I want you to go through and do these, because you're going to have to do them in your life, you're going to have to do them on the exam. You're going to have. To, this is how you learn things: is by doing them. So if you are, if you're writing out the answer that you, you think the answer is, this should simply be confirming it, or you should make adjustments to it based on what you see on the, on the in the solution. So I'd prefer not. I would rather you be writing this down because that's how you're going to learn it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to penalize. I, I, what I want to know is that you have stuff in the right place and that you clearly understand what it's supposed to be. So that's all it doesn't to reconcile. That's not a necessary. Um, well, no, that you really... <laughs> um, 
to some degree, you really need to have that. That's the adjustments, because it's the, that's what you're doing, the adjustments to reconcile net income to net cash. You know, it, it, I'm not going to be, a, I'm not going to go crazy. It, it, for exam purposes, I just want to know that you understand where things go and you understand how they behave. That's really the most important thing to me. Okay? Um, so, you know, all you're doing, adjustments to net income to arrive at cash for operating activities, you know, whatever it is, as long as it's reasonable. Okay? Um, yes? Yes. No, because that's non-current assets. So then you would show it um, in the operating section. Okay. Other, other questions? Other questions? Yes. Yeah, actually, as I'm thinking about this, I think that goes in the investing section. The sale, the trading security, the loss regardless is going to have to come out in the operating section. The question is whether or not, I'm just trying to think about that. If you have a sale of an investment that's considered a current asset, I think, um, let, me let, let me get back to you on that. I don't want to give you the wrong information. Let me check that. Okay. So the question, that, the question that was asked, which I just want to make sure I'm giving you the right information. So here we have sale of investments, because it, but this is where non-current assets generally go. If it's trading, then it's considered current assets. So my inclination would be to say that goes in operating. Um, but I'm trying to think of whether or not I've seen that in operating or if I've only seen that in investing. So let me, just, let me look that up and I'll get back to you. Okay? I don't want to give you, like I said, I don't want to give you the wrong answer on that. Um, all right. So moving along to the next... Uh, to a direct method. Now we're into direct method. Did everybody go, spend the time and go through 23, what was it, 23.5? Hopefully yes, since I gave you such a long lunch. Or did we just take a longer lunch? <laughs> Do you need a couple of minutes? Okay, take a couple of minutes because I want you to get something out of this. <laughs> Five. So here we're, we're preparing um, a statement of cash flows. Okay for operating activities. So remember, they're the same regardless of whether or not you use direct or indirect for investing and financing. It's just the operating section. <clears throat> so cash receipts from customers, you have revenue, and then you have to look at the change in accounts receivable. Okay, so here, the 862, you have your, sale, your service revenue, and then you have accounts receivable went down, which means cash went up. So there's your 862, cash receipts from customers. Next, we have cash payment for operating expenses. So here, um, we have 624 as operating expenses on the income statement. Here, um, they're using accounts payable. Is there any cost of goods sold in this problem? So here, accounts payable is going with operating expenses. I mean, it's like you, know, you need to incorporate it. So accounts payable went up, which means the amount paid went down. So you subtract it. There's your 609. And cash payments for income taxes. So you have 40,000, uh, which, which is your expense. You find the corresponding balance sheet account, which here is income taxes payable. Income taxes payable went what direction? Down, which means you must have paid more. So you add it. There's your 44.5 for your total of 653.500. So your net cash provided by operating activities is, is your receipts minus your payments. That's the 208.500. Okay. I hope that for some of you, this is starting to, you're starting to see that some repeat, that you're starting to make some sense to you. Okay. Yes. Um, oh, you mean like 862 minus 653? Yeah. Well, this is just a computation. This is not actually on the statement of cash flows. This is how you arrive at these numbers. Um, that's a good question. So, does it have to be in with a parentheses? I don't care. 
Okay? If there's not like an accounting rule that says if it's neg if it's parentheses, it's this. As long as it's clear to me what you're doing, okay? So imagine this. So someone has to grade these. If they're difficult to grade, you're more likely to get it wrong. So make sure it's clear, okay, what you're doing. Not ambiguous <laughs> what you're doing, okay? Um, but I don't care if it's got parentheses, if you do different columns. Those are all acceptable ways of, of accounting for things. I know some people will be very specific with how they want you to report things. I'm just, it's just not my style. I just, I'm, I more want to understand that you know, know that you understand, not understand that you, or both, I guess both of those work. So, okay. Um, I'll leave that for a minute. And then uh, I have another exercise that just kind of goes through wh what section things belong in and what direction. Would you like to try that? Get like a little practice? Okay. So if you want to start looking at brief exercise 23.3, brief exercise 23.3. Okay. Well,